three. All right. Welcome, Tawhid. Uh, thanks. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. Uh, so, Tawhid, uh, why don't you start up with an introduction to yourself and what you have done? Sure, sir. First of all, good morning, sir. My name is Tawhid Mahalti. Recently completed my B Tech in July 2022. Next joined as a design engineer in an automobile company where I had worked around three to four months. Uh, later, I have learned a AWS DevOps course, Python SQL, and this got me to, uh, like passion for cloud uh, like cloud computing. Uh, from January, I am doing like I'm pursuing AWS Restart program powered by Generations of India, where I am learning AWS Solution Architect Associate. I have hands on like I have good hands on experience in AWS uh, services like in hundred plus AWS services uh, plus uh, uh, like Linux uh, Linux administration and key services like EC2, S3, GPC, and I am uh, and I have a knowledge in uh, cost optimization, data migration, and AWS CLI plus uh, some DevOps tools like Jenkins, Git, uh, and Docker, Terraform. Uh, that's all about from this, from my side, sir. Okay, cool. Now, uh, Tawhid, can you can you start uh, to uh, let let me know about what is the most complex project you have done, and probably uh, go into some of the tech stacks in detail and uh, uh, try to elaborate as much as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, like uh, past month, I have uh, done a project using Terraform Docker. Like I have built a Word, WordPress website using this Terraform Docker, plus uh, using some like uh, database services of a. Uh, uh, AWS like RDS. So I like I have not uh, initially like uh, introduced with this DevOps tools, but I have like tried to uh, use the documentation of the uh, like Terraform, Docker, etc. Uh, and I have built some like projects. Okay. Now uh, you have spoken about uh, Docker a little bit. Uh, can you tell me uh, what do you understand by container? So container is nothing but uh, like a like it's a working environment where like where we can uh, uh, pull an image and uh, start the image but then the, the the then that the image will be like uh, in working condition like where we don't where we don't need to uh, need the uh, work uh, operating systems so like we don't need the operating system uh, uh, the application can run without the need of the operating system okay like the host operating right and the what what are the layers of a container? Um, so like uh, the first layer will be like uh, the host of uh, like host machine. After that, we need we have to install the Docker application. After the Docker application, directly we can uh, uh, install our uh, like our web server or our applications. So we don't need to install the guest operating system like uh, we, like we will be doing in virtualization or VM software. Okay, and. Uh... So do you, what, do you understand the difference between SAS, PaaS, and IAS? Yes, Can you sir. Tell me about that. Yes, sir. Like uh, IA, IAS is nothing but infrastructure as a service. So it it is a service like uh, it is example of AWS. Sir. Okay. Uh, where where we have to like uh, where we don't need to uh, where the the providing services will provide the compute storage and networking services where we don't have to like uh, like where we don't have to buy or uh, manage the uh, like manage the uh, databases etc okay. so where uh, their platform as a service is nothing but uh, it is a service where uh, we can like uh, it is a ma it is a completely managed service where we can give our uh, application code then it will automatically resize and come resize and manage its uh, uh, desired uh, like desired capacity like it will manage completely by itself where we don't have to like manage or you know, see the configuration etc mm -hmm. whereas sas is nothing but uh, uh, it is a software as a service it is nothing like uh, uh, is it, it is nothing like the application like uh, it's a chrome application or email application where it is completely managed and uh, created by the provider where we have to just uh, uh, use like where we need to just use the application okay now you said that you use containers so how do containers uh, communicate in kubernetes um, so they like it has some networking so i'm not uh, able to recall right now okay so yeah so next question would have been if you could have told that like how do you restrict the communication but uh, that's, that's that's all right 
do you have any understanding of how does kubernetes uh, orchestrate containers so can can you tell me something about the uh, like the control plane node planes and how does kubernetes work uh, like i am new to the kubernetes uh, like uh, uh, currently i am not able to recall like no, no problems at all uh, so have you used load balances yes sir okay uh, what is a sticky session in load balancing okay sir so i'll i'll tell you like with an example sir but uh, um, it is nothing but uh, uh, it is a, so, so, so suppose uh, if uh, if suppose uh, i'm using a uh, i'm filling an application uh, in the like uh, i'm filling an uh, application form in the like in a website suppose my internet uh, uh, gives trouble or uh, uh, it is, or the website goes uh, like uh, down uh, after some time when i will be like uh, uh, after some time when i will be like uh, uh, again again filling out the form then it will give the uh, like uh, it will give another uh, like it will not store the previous information of our user so by this uh, session like ses session keys it will uh, redirect the same server for the cus for the customer to uh, like for the second time as well sir uh, by this uh, the customer like the, by this the customer will get the information which he has entered previously mm -hmm. like it will allocate the same server for the second time as well like by not distributing the traffic to another server all right uh, I, th I think you have an understanding of the concept, but probably uh, you're not able to get it into the right. Hello? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. No, I'm no, it's not a bit. Okay. All right. So can you tell me how many types of load balances are there? Yes, sir. There are uh, currently three types, sir. Like application load balancer, network load balancer, and uh, network uh, gateway. Okay. And can you tell me the difference between application and network load balancers? Yes, sir. like application load balancer is uh, used for uh, like uh, directing the traffic uh, uh, to the applications. Whereas the network load balancer, uh, it's uh, it has more uh, like it has it has more features compared to application load balancer. Uh, where uh, like generally the the application load balancer is used for applications, whereas the load balancer is used for the other like services. Okay, so have you heard of uh, level four and level seven load balancers like TCP, IP, and uh, the network packets? No, sir, no, sir, I'm not aware of uh, You said that you have worked on Linux. Uh, yes, sir. Tell me about uh, how do you log into from one Linux box to another Linux box without using a password? So, so like, uh, first of all, we need to. Um... We need to configure like the. Uh, we need to like we need to give the passwords for the another machine in this only. So like uh, we have to configure the. Okay. Have you heard of SSH keys? The private and public. Yes, do you do you know yes, how sir. to use the SSH keys to actually do an authentication without a password? Uh, yes, sir. Like SSH keys is like it's a keeper. Uh, by this, we can like log into our uh, server. Yeah, so you need, you need to actually create an SSH key, uh, use the public key into an authorized key into the another server, and then you can log in. Yes. All right. Uh, you said that you have used around hundred plus AWS services. Uh, have you have you heard of IAM? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Identity access and management. So where have you used IAM? And can you tell me uh, why would you use IAM and what are the advantages of it? Sure, sir. IAM is, a, is nothing but a security service provided by the Amazon. So basically, its policy like uh, its policy is to give the least privileged access for the for the user or for the service, like as least as possible for our security uh, purposes. So like the, for this. Uh, I am has like uh, users, groups, and roles. Uh, whereas, uh, whereas in I, I am roles, uh, I am users. We can create the uh, users like uh, for their for their purpose, like for what they are, like for what uh, they like what they are uh, authenticated to use. Okay. Like we can create for the least privileges. 
Uh, what do you understand by what's the difference between authentication and authorization? Yes, sir. Like authentication is a, is a, like is a permission like to access uh, like to access to access a service, whereas the authorization is a uh, is kind of a is kind of a permission like uh, for how for how much level uh, for how much level a person can access it like for how much uh, okay and uh, have you have you heard of identity federation yes sir identity federation sir. can you tell me about what is an identity federation identity federation is like a, a third party uh, uh, for suppose like example uh, for AWS, uh, we uh, we don't need to create an uh, credentials. If uh, if the Facebook, like uh, for example, in my case, like uh, Facebook, it has like it has the Active Directory, it has its employee IDs and passwords. So by that, uh, we can like uh, log into our AWS services as well with this uh, uh, identity federations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you tell... need to create the AWS identity. Can you tell me the detailed steps? So, so let's say if I'm uh... If I'm using a client browser and I'm trying to work in through the through an identity federation, can you tell me what are the different steps that take place in the backend? So what happens sure. from, from, from the browser? I'm not sure that I'll try to. Have you heard of uh, access tokens and authentication tokens? Do you know how these work in at the background? No, sir, no. Oh. Uh, So what are the tools have you used in AWS? Have you used AWS Lambda? Yes, sir. I have learned about uh, AWS Lambda, but uh, didn't get a chance to work on it. So it's uh, a basically serverless uh, service provided by AWS. All right. Uh, what do you understand by an edge location in AWS? Sure, sir. Edge locations are uh, CDN endpoints. Uh, it is located uh, like... Uh, it is located in most of the most of the cities all over the world. Uh, it is basically uh, it is used by the cloud front uh, to like uh, to distribute the uh, to to distribute the uh, content to the end users. So, like it will be storing the caches of the content uh, and it will help the cl cloud front to distribute uh, to the end users without uh, by uh, by the low latency. All right. And what are the AWS services that can be combined with the the edge locations? Uh, the first one is uh, cloud front, sir. Like uh, uh, Route fifty three will be like will be. Okay. What else do you think? S three can be associated with an edge location. Uh, yes, sir. Sure, sir. Like to to retrieve the data from the S three, sir. Like it will be used. Okay. All right. So let's assume that we have got uh, five different VPCs. And uh, so, what what AWS toolkit or module would you use to have interconnectivity between all those VPCs, so which shouldn't cost you for any traffic? Yes, sir. Like for uh, connecting two VPCs, we'll be using VPC pairing. For for multi for multiple VPCs, uh, we'll be we can use the uh, transmit uh, like uh, transmit uh, pairing, sir. Transit gateway. Yeah, trans. Right. And what is the difference between a VPC pairing and a transit gateway? Yeah, like uh, for VPC pairing, we can connect to uh, you know, VPC A and VPC B, sir. Uh, by this uh, transit gateway, we can connect multiple VPCs uh, so that they can like uh, share the data over, over the same network. Right. And uh, have you heard of uh, NAT instance and NAT gateways? Yes, sir. Can you tell me what is NAT used for? Uh, like uh, generally NAT is used to uh, like the give the internet uh, connection for the private uh, private subnets so, like uh, it is like it is installed like it is uh, installed in the public subnet uh, and it is uh, and, and in the route table will be giving the route to the uh, private as well so by this the private subnet can access to the internet using this uh, NAT instance when would you use a NAT instance and when would you use a NAT gateway um, like uh, I'm not recalling it right now. That's all right. Okay. Uh, now in terms of the load balances again, so what are the different types of routing policies? Yes, sir. 
like there are four to five types of routing policies the first one is uh, geolocation routing policies second one is weighted routing policy uh, third one is simple routing policy fourth one is geo proximity routing policy and fifth one is uh, um, i'm not recalling like there are four to five types of recalling policies uh, routing policies two two of them uh so there, there's a latency based routing policy so let's can you tell me the difference between a weighted routing policy and a latency based routing policy yes, so weighted weighted routing policy is nothing but uh, like we'll be uh, we we have been like uh, uh, set the routing policy like uh, uh, for the server uh, server one we should uh, the traffic should be uh, uh, directed only the 45 like 40 to 50 percent like we can set like that uh, for the server two, the remaining traffic should uh, should be routed. Whereas the like, uh, whereas the latency 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 routing, it is based on the uh, end user location. By that, uh, if suppose the end user is uh, uh, situated like uh, located in India, the uh, the server uh, which is uh, which is which has the lowest latency that will be that traffic will be routed to that uh, server. Okay. Now, let's say you are you are creating a project from scratch and you go to three tier architecture. So, in yes. terms of in terms of cloud security, what are the fundamental things that you will implement for the application to be secure? For the three three tier application. Yeah. Or you can take a five tier application if you want. But uh, the no, question sir, is that, uh, what are the fundamental aspects of security that you will ensure that your application is very very secure? Yeah, sure, sir. Like uh, for uh, for uh, deploying my application in the cloud, uh, I'll be like uh, uh, I'll be creating my VPC. You know, that is a virtually logical, uh, virtually logically isolated network uh, in the cloud. After that, I'll be uh, I'll be creating the NACL. That is the network access control list. Uh, it will it will uh, that will restrict the incoming slash outgoing traffic on the subnet level. After that, I'll be uh, uh, creating security groups uh, that will uh, that will restrict the uh, restrict the incoming traffic at the instance level by this i can like uh, uh, give the security for my application uh, there are like many other services as well that can uh, uh, like uh, give the security like uh, uh, aws waf web application firewall uh, the plus the guard duty plus uh, yeah, many other services which can give the security for my applications. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of so, let's say you have so you have a three tier architecture. So, can you tell me which of the components would you place in a public subnet and which one of them in a private subnet? Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, like for my public uh, subnet, I'll be like I'll be keeping the servers which uh, which needs to be accessed by the public, uh, like the like my servers or my uh, websites uh, web servers. I'll be keeping in the public subnets. Uh, whereas my databases and other uh, uh, other like other private uh, service uh, other private resources, I'll be keeping in my uh, private subnets. By this uh, the uh, the end public the, uh, by, by this the end customers will will be only accessing the public uh, face network uh, public face resources okay. and uh, let's say if your application layer requires some access to internet to download some content and you have placed it in a private subnet how will you get internet access to your private subnet so like uh, as i have said you like uh, we can use the net uh, net instance by that too, we can uh, get the internet access to our private subnet okay like right. uh, mm, we had another service uh, we can use but i'm not getting right now okay like to like to give the internet access to our uh, private subnet i'm not recalling that internet like internet the bastion host sir. bastion host to buy that we can get the internet okay and what about internet gateways yeah we, we can like we can you know, we can attach the internet gateway to our uh, public subnet slot like, like uh, for, that will be not uh, the uh, internet gateway will be in like uh, we we will be not attaching it to the, our private subnet no? that's correct but uh, would you so the next question for you is if i'm attaching 
my internet gateway to a public subnet. And then from the private subnet, I'm attaching it to uh, the NAT gateway. So what, what, do you think the traffic goes from your private subnet to your NAT gateway and then through your internet, internet gateway? And then does it go get the internet? Or can it just use the NAT gateway and that's it? Like the request from the private uh, subnet will first go to the NAT gateway, then then from the, from there then then will uh, it will be like uh, uh, goes uh, out of the like networks so like like out of our VPCs. That would be through the internet gateway. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So have you worked on databases? Yes, sir. I have a little bit worked on it. All right. Do you know the difference between a SQL and a NoSQL database? Yes, sir. Can you expand? Yeah, like uh, SQL database, nothing but a relational database where we need to like uh, uh, manage and uh, give the data in a rows and columns ways. Whereas no SQL database, nothing but uh, uh, key and value, key and value pair. Like uh, for this service, we have like a DynamoDB in AWS server. And uh, what are the what are the? Can you tell me about scenarios uh, where you would use an RDS and where you would use an OSQL? Yes, sir. Like, uh, uh, we can we can keep the complex uh, complex data in RDS, uh, uh, in RDS. Whereas in uh, uh, sorry, sir. Where uh, yeah, if the complex data we can keep in RDS. Whereas in uh, only the name and value, like the name and value data in a DynamoDB. Like DynamoDB is uh, used for uh, it gives like a millisecond low latency. Like it is it is a high speed uh, network, uh, high speed service. Uh, by uh, this, this can be used in a uh, uh, way uh, like uh, using in games, uh, gaming services, or uh, uh, very complex uh, queries. Uh, like this can be used. All right. And how do you back up a DynamoDB? Uh, like with a with a, with a like again, RDS. You have to take a snapshot and you have to take a backup, right? How do you yes, back sir, yes. how do you backup DynamoDB? I think uh, we can take the back uh, backup uh, by uh, like uh, with the snapshots itself. Oh, uh, that was a trick question. You don't backup down over DB. It's all done by within AWS itself. So, yeah. Sure. Sorry, I, I was not aware of. It. No, no, that's that's fine completely. All right. So, uh, so what about have you used CI/CD? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in like uh, I had uh, used around like uh, three to uh, three to four months back. I have used. Like not in depth, but uh, I know like how it works. Some okay. So are you aware? So what have you used? Have you used Git? Yes, sir. I have used Git. Okay. Uh, so and uh, what are the different branching strategies in Git? Mm, so like uh, there are two types. Uh, as far as I think I know, sir, there is a master master branch and this uh, slave branch, sir, where we can. Uh, uh, divide the branch and do our develop like uh, do our programming and after like after we are satisfied satisfied then we can merge the merge it to the master branch. And uh, what's the difference between branching and forking? Branching and poking. Fork, fork. You understand like knife and fork. Fork, fork. Yeah, yeah. yes, sir. Fork. Do you know what a forking is? Uh, no, sir. I don't. All right. Okay. So if I ask you to create a Git repository and like when, whenever you're doing some commits into a specific branch, you want some CI process to run along with it. So how would you execute that? So let's say you want to commit something in Git and you want the Jenkins to run automatically. So do you know some sort of configuration? How, if you can do that, is it possible? Or how would you do that if it is? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. I think we can do with uh, Jenkins pipelines uh, where we can, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, set the set the conditions. Like, uh, whenever the Git has a new commit, uh, it will automatically uh, pull the uh, pull the code from the Git. Uh, then it will uh, uh, build the uh, build the code. Uh, like, it will uh, make the artifact, and uh, after that, it will test, and we can deploy it in the servers. Like, we can give we can make the pipelines uh, using some conditions. Okay. Now, I think we are just coming on towards the end of the interview here. 
So just yeah. want to have an understanding of how much do you know about DevOps? What do you understand by DevOps? So, so like uh, uh, basically DevOps is nothing but the collaboration and uh, communication between the software developers and IT professionals. So, uh, to to automate the deliver like to automate the deployment of the application uh, and uh, and changes in the infrastructure so it's it's nothing but it, it is basically a method methodology okay like, and uh, so what are the different can you can you tell me what are the components of devops and what are the different tools that you can think of mm, yes sir like uh, uh, like first of all, for like the basic tool we can like uh, we can be use is uh, Linux uh, like without that we can't do anything. After that uh, we can use like Git, uh, Git Jenkins uh, for CI/CD, uh, plus Docker for cont containerization and uh, Ansible for configuration management, uh, plus uh, like uh, Kubernetes for orchestration for orchestration purpose. Uh, we can use. Uh, like Terraform, Terraform for uh, infrastructure as code uh, to create the uh, to create our infrastructure using scripts etc. Uh, after that, we can we can use like uh, some monitoring tools like Nagios or some data docs. Uh, uh, we can use like uh, Chef tool also for uh, configuration and uh, uh, analysis of the code. All right. So you've got a tool like Artifactory or Nexus. Where would you use that? Um, uh, like I didn't heard about that. All right. Now, uh, in terms of uh, your CI, so what's the what's the difference between CI and CD? CI and CD, sir. Continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, continuous integration, uh, like consists of uh, uh, the uh, like. Uh, uh, continuously getting the code from git uh, next the, the the next step in the continue in ci is uh, uh, continuously building the code like uh, making it art artifact like uh, after that the step 3 will be like uh, continuously testing uh, uh, in the in the ci the fourth step will be like uh, um, continuous uh, delivery uh, whereas if it uh, continuous deployments the fourth step will be like uh, continuous deployment uh, after that, the continuous delivery, like uh, after making the required processes, it will uh, uh, deploy into the server, into the prod server. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you, Tawit. So I'm towards the end of my questions now. So as as uh, this was a mock interview, uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for your time today. So I think uh, yeah, you did well, and uh, yeah, best of luck. Uh, thank so you, sir. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, like, uh, can you give me like a feedback where I need to improve a little bit? So I, I can do that. Uh, so I'll, I'll just do this after this recording. So, but uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for your time, sir.